if you ask the typical cloud engineer, would you like to use infrastructure as code? In 100%, the answer will be yes. But what we see right now is that only on new project, people are embracing infrastructure as code because they are as that technical debt of the stuff that they are already put in the cloud and they are not putting the time and effort to codify them. And this is exactly where Firefly is uh, coming handy. So we're saying it's not just the greenfield kind of uh, project when you want to use the, the best of breed technology like infrastructure as code. Let's take the entire cloud, the stuff that you put two years ago, three years ago, and create infrastructure as code for you so you can enjoy all of the benefits of infrastructure as code. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. 20 Minute Leaders is a proud supporter of Make-A-Wish Israel and tech to peace and is in proud collaboration with Secret Chord Ventures, J Ventures, Riverside FM, Fusion VC, Birthright Excel, J Impact, Leap, Google for Startups, and Hippo, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Hello and welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today I am with Eran Bibi, the co-founder and chief product officer at Firefly. With years of experience in anything DevOps, he has earned a reputation as a CI-CD expert and an avid admin of cloud platforms and containerized environments. Eran Bibi, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm uh, amazing. Thank you for having me, Mikhail. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. We're, we're talking about a subject that I that I care about a lot. We're talking about obviously cloud infrastructure, bringing clouds up to date uh, today with Firefly. But before that, uh, you've been, you have had a long journey working in DevOps, the ICD, and being a strategic thinker in these areas. And so uh, I'm looking forward to get, gaining your own perspective on where we're at with the space, what are the different opportunities, what, what are the different gaps that we've observed in the market. And just recently, somebody reminded me that still most of the world is on prem, which is kind of weird for me uh, growing up to a world where I don't know what a server is. I just know what AWS is. Uh, right. And so it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's weird uh, to me as well, because in our uh, you know small ecosystem uh, here in uh, Israel and uh, specifically in the Tel Aviv startup area, everything is in the cloud, right? And uh, most sure. of the engineers basically born in the cloud. So uh, yep. telling the fact that uh, most of the compute is on-prem uh, in uh, 2022 is uh, a bit weird. Right, right. So so how did, well, what, what is happening? Just to give me a, maybe a, a broad picture of the world today, 2022, what's the state of cloud today? So I think in the past 10 years, there was uh, a rush to cloud computing because all of the advantages of uh, basically uh, giving the provider to manage all the infrastructure and all the automation uh, around that. And uh, this use advantage uh, for helping businesses to get uh, more uh, uh, software delivery uh, much, much faster with uh, less people involved in uh, infrastructure and networking and storage and other kind of uh, professions that we are uh, nearly see today. And if you tell me what is the state right now, I will say it's a bit chaotic because the transition to the cloud was very, very fast. And something uh, very significant in the landscape is the shortage of talent, the shortage mm -hmm. of talent that we have uh, specifically in cloud computing and uh, in DevOps methodology. And this caused a lot of uh, challenges, new challenges that the uh, organization didn't face uh, before that. So, so I want to delve on this point because uh, you're mentioning, you're, you're using the word chaotic and then you're mentioning that the transition to cloud will happen very, very quick. You, I, it almost feels like you're saying it was too quick. It was too fast. Uh, I think it was uh, pretty much natural uh, in the face that um, organization decided to transition to the cloud because at the beginning, there was some barriers around that because some con security concern, but because the vendors, the, the huge vendors like AWS and Microsoft, 
were able to prove that even uh, governments can host their uh, facilities sure. in the cloud. So everybody mm-hmm. understand that there is no uh, any barrier to move to cloud computing. Sure. It's pure advantages, right? So yep. once it's done, I and mean, I think it was like the, the, the main milestone was around like four years ago. Everybody try to build something on the cloud, whether they have uh, the, the engineering capacity to do that and the knowledge or not. They just put mm-hmm. stuff on the cloud. Sure. Yeah. And, and then you're mentioning that there is a, you know, there's a strategy to it. There is order. There is different mechanisms that make it, uh, I guess, a more healthy way of being in the cloud rather than not. And so it, it, all, it felt like you're mentioning that, at least to me, it felt that because of the speed at which we've transitioned to the cloud, now we're stopping and we're saying, wow, okay, actually we have to, we have to think again about what infrastructure we built here and how we're organizing our cloud infrastructure and what are the best practices and we may not be using them right now. Right. I think it's all about whether you are properly utilized in the cloud because mm-hmm. everybody put stuff in the cloud very fast. Most of the times it was not that efficient. It was not optimized. It was not uh, very secured. That's why you see a lot of cloud security company uh, raising uh, nowadays. And right now, I think it's the phase that cloud computing and the adoption become more mature. So mm-hmm. it's not just putting stuff on the cloud instead of putting it on-prem. We just how sure. to do it right, how to do it in a scale, how to make sure we have the right uh, people and training for the people to do it properly. Yeah, right. And so, tell me a little bit about your own your own background and entrance to to cloud. You know, you as an engineer, you can choose to to get excited about a variety of technologies. What what is it about the cloud that that really gets you going? So. Um, I am in the business something like uh, 17 years, and in my background, I did most of uh, system uh, engineering and infrastructure administration. And when cloud became a thing, uh, something like 10 years ago, uh, you saw that software development development being involved with infrastructure, and that was basically the concept of DevOps of how to automate stuff, how to do stuff uh, using your engineering skill as a developer. And I found myself very intrigued by this concept of uh, not just doing the operational and the monitoring and the hardcore infrastructure stuff, also doing software lifecycle development like CICD. And it's like DevOps was built directly to the stuff that I want to do in my life. And I was... uh, Basically embrace it and uh, just willing to be more and more professional on that specific uh, methodology. Mm -hmm. Is that, is it stemming from um, this personal agency to affect great change within organizations? Is it stemming mainly from a curiosity about, you know, what these organizations are, you know, how, what, what are the best practices? So what, what is sort of the driving force for you with, in relation to this technology? I think it's, uh, for me, it's like enjoying, uh, enjoying both worlds. Like from one end, I really like infrastructure and servers and operating system and the stuff that is, uh, less development oriented. Mm-hmm. But yep. in the other end, I really like scripting and, uh, light coding. And this is stuff that, uh, as a system administrator, I did a lot like, uh, um, uh, Python scripting and shell scripting and stuff like that. And DevOps is basically combining those two skills into um, <laughs> one achievement to make software sure. deployed faster uh, into the cloud. Got it. And and is it is it uh, more working alone, working with a team? What 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 do you enjoy more? I really enjoy uh, enjoying the education and training around that. Mm. As someone that did that profession. Um, in the early stage of DevOps, I really enjoy being involved in the community and uh, doing talks and explaining and uh, basically uh, evangelist DevOps and telling the world why it's um, this is the better way uh, uh, to manage software in the clouds and all of the practices around it. And, you know, there is tons of technologies involved 
and each sure. year there is a new new kid on the block, like new technology yeah. that the DevOps engineer need to master. So sure. it's really fast moving kind of experience for me. I love it. So, and I'm, and by the way, I'm sure that also the conversation has been shifting over the last few years from that of cloud is good to now, okay, how do we actually make it amazing, right? So the, you, we started the conversation saying we, there was an agreement that cl- cloud is undisputedly better than the non-prem for a variety of reasons, but now you're saying the conversation, the interesting conversation is, okay, but how do we do it really, really well? And that's where you come and you bring your own insights, right? Right. I think one of the main challenges that we are facing uh, in the last year is uh, the dependency that organization and development team uh, add with those cloud professions, uh, professionals, sure. like DevOps engineers. And that dependency cause uh, stuff to be slowed down. So instead yeah. of DevOps be the enablement and the, um, the function in the engineering that will help to drive right. it faster, it become like a burden because you don't sure. have enough DevOps in relation to uh, the engineers and then you are slowing down. So I think this is something that right now organization trying to solve. It makes sense. I mean, it's, it's sort of like this function within the organization that holds the key to the box and there's a deadlock on this key and uh, we have to find better, you know, if we're going back to operating systems type of ideas, how do we, how do we create better, better mechanisms for unlocking this key and for, for allowing anybody to do things. But, but on the other hand, I also saw that there were organizations that are going for more autonomy to the average engineer to be able to manage their own cloud service. Well, that comes back to bite them in the ass in a different way, obviously, because they don't use the best practices, right? Exactly. Because, you know, when you put it on paper, it sounds amazing. You say, everybody should know DevOps because DevOps is not a a profession. It's a methodology. It's a culture. It's something that you need to embed in the DNA of the engineering team. But then when reality hits, you understand that... The typical software engineer would like to write software, would like to uh, do business uh, kind of feature. And that DevOps task is basically a burden for him. Yeah. So it's not for everybody. Yet there is a lot of engineers that enjoy doing DevOps and uh, uh, don't need to be dependent on anyone because they have the right skills and the right mindset. But the, the majority of engineering, when they have a new sprint coming and they need, and they have their uh, assignment for the sprint, is, it's a business oriented. And the DevOps is just, you know, some other task they need to do. And in most of sure. the case, they will prefer to lay off that task to somebody else that this is his profession. This is what he's doing for his living. And this is like his expertise and he will do it better and quicker than him because he has the the access and the permissions and the knowledge. And um, so I think that concept of everybody doing DevOps is not really aligned with what's happening in, in, in most of the organizations. So Firefly, where, where does this catch you? Where, what is, how do you see this world, what, what is the sort of pain point that you're identifying that you want to be solved with Firefly? So the story in Firefly um, is a very nice story. I was uh, in a position in my previous company where I was managing a DevOps team and uh, platform engineering, and I did a very nice uh, uh, career on that direction of uh, being a leader in the engineering team. But then I was met uh, uh, Ido, which is my co-founder, and uh, uh, Sefi, which is the CTO of uh, uh, Firefly. And they well, were consulting with me about the idea that they have to automate some of the tasks for DevOps with the mindset of how to make the cloud better for DevOps engineers. And it were really pinpointing on some of the pains that I was having uh, during the past decades about you, you, from one end, you want to put stuff very fast. In other end, you need to make sure it's properly aligned with the best practice. And um, Firefly is basically introducing uh, the solution for that. 
Mm -hmm. And so what, what is the actual product that you're building? So we are scanning uh, the cloud of the user. We are a multi-cloud, multi-account system. We are providing visibility about all of the configuration and assets that the user have. And we provide a very nice metric that say how much percentage of the cloud is being managed by infrastructure as code versus the stuff that you created manually using like a click ops kind of methodology, like the, the bad way of putting stuff in the cloud. And then with our technology, we were able to create automatically code for the missing part of the cloud. And what we are doing is uh, going to organization and help them to increase the infrastructure as code coverage in an automated way and making sure that everything is And by the way, why, why is that useful? Why is, the, why is this, why have you identified that this is a critical piece of, of, the, of, of what a company should be doing? Because when you are talking about provisioning assets in the cloud, right now, the best way to do it, and uh, this is something that we see in the past few years, is using infrastructure as code. You're basically mm -hmm. leveraging all of the benefits that have uh, a code lifecycle with peer review, with CICD gating, with all of the tools that you can put before provisioning into an infrastructure. And there is a very nice uh, and popular framework to drive this like Terraform and Pulumi and CloudFormation. And if you ask the typical cloud engineer, would you like to use infrastructure as code? In 100%, the answer will be yes. But what we see right now is that only on new projects, people are embracing infrastructure as code because they are as that technical debt of the stuff that they are already put in the cloud and they are not putting the time and effort to codify them. And this is exactly where Firefly is uh, coming handy. So we're saying it's not just the greenfield kind of uh, project when you want to use the, the best of breed technology like infrastructure as code. Let's take the entire cloud, the stuff that you put two years ago, three years ago, and create infrastructure as code for you so you can enjoy all of the benefits of infrastructure as code. Mm -hmm. And is it, I guess this is selling it more top down in terms of go to market. Uh, so because you're looking strategically at how a company operates from an infrastructure play versus a, you know, single spontaneous flick play. So it's a great question. We are basically tackle uh, both direction. Our platform is uh, a CLG oriented. We have a self service. You don't need to contact anyone in Firefly in order to enjoy it. We have a free tier that basically any, any, any small team can enjoy. And we have our like unlimited offering open uh, for 21 days. So you to explore and see all of the benefits of uh, for a flight. Mm -hmm. But we also do indirect sales, like uh, trying to reach out to those specific uh, uh, personas that have those space, like the director of DevOps, the head of DevOps of uh, a certain organization. Interesting. As, uh, as, as you imagine yourself integrating into more and more of these companies, how, how do you see the, the cloud world shifting simultaneously? Do you see this problem getting bigger, getting smaller? Do people, are people converging on this idea? Do you find that they're diverging and you need to bring them in? In other words, how aligned is where you are now versus how the world is shifting with or without you? We are in the infrastructure as code space, right? So uh -huh. this is right now, uh, at least as we see it, the beginning of the transition. So we see a lot mm. of traction around it. There is a lot of new startup in the ecosystem. And we also see Ashicorp, which is a great company that uh, basically introduced Terraform. This is the most popular framework for infrastructure as code become huge company, public company. They, they were uh, IPOing uh, six months ago. And um, from that perspective, we see that we are in a very good place. Mm -hmm. Go back to your own, uh, to your own, you know, reason for doing this and your own, your own interest and curiosity. You know, what, what, do, you, what do you enjoy most in, in what you're doing now? Is it the, you know, entrepreneurial side, um, the, the development side, the being a, a thought leader in the space. Well, what is sort of the driving force for you to go and start your own company? 
There is few, but I think uh, the most uh, uh, major one will be the shift in from a position where I am more in charge of uh, engineering execution to a product mm-hmm. management role where I need to uh, be more in the business front and talking with customers and doing a strategic roadmap and stuff like that. So this is the, the major shift, uh, at least for me. And again, as a DevOps engineer, there is a lot of uh, in-house tooling that we are building. So I think I had a uh, relatively good experience with building product, but this is the first time that I'm actually uh, doing a product management role. Again, I have just um, people that help, that I recruit that help me uh, with this, but this is um, relatively new to me. Again, I'm doing it awesome. uh, in the past year and I really, really enjoy it. I, I love it. And uh, it's, uh, I, I, it just sounds really cool how you're taking, you know, personal interest, you're taking a, you know, a shift in the world, um, identifying the potential and then coming and bringing it together while learning new skills and, and finding new things by yourself. So that's just very, very cool. And I wish you best of luck with Firefly, Iran. Thank you very, very much for being here in these 20 short, but, but awesome minutes. So thank you very, very much and best of luck with uh, Firefly. Thank you, Mithan. Thank you. Thank you.